like two sets. Right. I'll just wait for a few. Yeah, right, we're live now. Just there waiting for a few coming on, yeah. guys. Is there anyone there, guys? What's wrong with you? So look, I'll try one. Yeah. If you want, yeah, you give them a few more. Come on, just start the warm up, guys. Twelve on, come on, get them the numbers up a bit. <laughs> Twenty-five. I'm right. We're going to start, guys. I'm here today with Ricky. Ricky, can you give your credentials? What you're about and with your name and everything. And yeah, I'm uh, Ricky Colleen. I've got me one here, Jim, and I'm here. Uh, I'm sure I brought a book. I've got a uh, got me one book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, behind the bars, ruthless fitness. What I wrote whilst I was in prison. What I um, I wrote the book on a recall because when I was there, uh, I got sentenced to 99 years when I was 21 year old. IPP. Life imprisonment where they uh, got a recommendation of four year. Right, right. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna stop in there and we're gonna go back to Ricky Wood as a kid, how it all started, how we got into trouble and things like that. So you can relate to this, but ninety-nine years, guys. Ninety-nine years. Okay, that was unbelievable. Right, Ricky, where were you from? where were you born? Where I was born from? up in here uh, up in Newcastle, right? Elzig. I know Elzig, yeah. Yeah, I lived there with my mum and dad, we lived there for about five years. Right. But at the time it was there, uh, I don't know if you remember those Elzig rides. Yeah, I do remember the old cars were burning out and oh, the police cars were at Codswitz and everything up there. Yeah. Jeez, I remember it. But yeah, uh, I lived there, well, that happened when I was about five years old and my mum and dad had family over in Newcastle, uh, over in Stanley, sorry, County Durham. Mm. But yeah, uh, they decided to move us out of Elzig because it was, a, like I say, with the rides going on, it gave us a bit of a better start in life. Right. So we went over to Stanley, County Durham. Yeah. And we moved in uh, the roughest street in the fucking neighborhood. <laughs> right. So we went from one rough end straight back into another one. So what was it like? Did you go to school? Were you any good at school? Were you? I was all right in school, wasn't right. there? But from the age of like five, six, I was always into trouble, getting into fights and just nonsense. Where do you think that that come from? That that fighting? Just did you was a fight around the house and. Was it, there was, I was there, uh, I didn't see it like yeah. between me mom and dad, but growing up in the street where we lived, it was like yeah. a fucking every night, people were just out partying, yeah. drinking, and it was just fighting every day, but my mom and dad would be out in the street, my dad would be fighting with people, yeah. or my mother would be fighting with people. Right. And yeah, uh, obviously- so you think a lot of it's like what you see, you do what you see, because you see mom, your parents do things, you see other people, like brothers, and do you have any brothers and sisters? I got a brother and sister that lived with us. Obviously, I've got brothers and sisters to meet dad's first marriage. Yeah. yeah. But I had a brother and sister. I was the youngest of the three of us. Um, and my brother and sister weren't weren't as bad as me. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, so, uh, so, so you see, so when you're in that environment with kids fighting every day, <clears> you start to follow the money. You're maybe five or six, and they're nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You think, well, I want to do. I want to be like him, and I want to be a hard case like that one. So you're a product of your own environment. That's what it is, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, can you remember the first time you got in trouble with the police then? First time I got in trouble with the police, I was a uh, seven year old. Right. And that was shoplifting up in Stanley, because obviously growing up, we didn't really have much. Yeah. So, we used to go up with into the main street and just shoplifting, just pinching different things, getting sweets and that, just daft yeah. things. Yeah. But I remember when in the shop, we were pinching uh, bottles of aftershave. Right. And cassette tapes, remember the old cassette tapes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Pinching our lemon here. Yeah. I just kept going in and out of the shop and had a box around the back of the shop and went back in on the fifth occasion uh, and the security guard grabbed us on the way out. <laughs> right. But did you Sent get us there, phoned the coppers. Right. Ended up getting locked up, took to the police station and then phoned me dad. Me dad come and pick us up. Right. Took us back to me nana's. Yeah, me nana's fucking boot us up the arse on the way through the door. <laughs> Old school. You got, <laughs> got a slap round the ear, didn't it? Didn't do it, was it? Yeah, did it? So, <laughs> So when, when was the first time you were seen this arrest? Any, any seen this arrest? Would you say? Yeah, well, I got arrested a couple more times when I was when I was ten year old. Right. Yeah, um, I got arrested again, and on that occasion it was because um, the headmaster of the school was like six foot four, a massive big rugby player. Yeah. But whenever you got into trouble in school fighting, he would 
you would give your fucking good ball and after this fucking give your slap out and yeah, smack you, get, you off the yeah, door. Yeah, you, you get your ear took off, your head took off, wouldn't you? You, yeah. you get the cane when I was at school right. and things like that. You, they, 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 you know, they, they give that. Another thing in the chalkboard, they back you with know, that. The kids now, they're done on the bone. <laughs> we used to drag, it doesn't matter who was it was that fighting. I remember this one lad, he uh, wasn't all there. And the headmaster just had him by his head, dragging him through the corridors, banging him off every fucking classroom. Yeah. We had a kid like that, that called Leslie Bradshaw. And uh, there was a bit of carry on the class, and the teacher went and looked at the headmaster and called Mr. Sadler. He was a master, he was ex Boston, he was in the Boston. And he dragged him down, man, booted him all over. He's done that now, you go to jail. You know, the, the kids now, oh, my sister's a social worker, 35 years. Yeah, they actually thought, yeah, I, I want to, I, I, my mum's bullying me over there. They thought, look, social services yeah. now. It's just, just, there's no deterrent now, is there? Kids have lost respect. No, when yeah. you were a kid, you, you have to do as you're told, you wouldn't be able to. Open your mouth, be seen, seen and not heard, and things like that. Now it's just like the kids seem to control the mum and dad's. Yeah, yeah. With this um, one, dear, he, yeah, he launched us off the door, and I had a big bruise down the back, down my back. And I remember I was in the house, I was getting near uh, changing my mum, and my dad had seen the bruise on my back and all that. Fucking went off it. But yeah, uh, that was like when I thought I started rebelling against the teacher for doing it, where the right. headmaster. So me and my pal went down to the school at the weekend when I was sure this, uh, ten year old, ten year old. And my foot and we smashed every window in the school. <laughs> and they had the school, the school had to shut down for two weeks. We got kicked out of the school for good. And the kids, you were heroes for <laughs> <and> the kids. <laughs> Cop was coming, locked us up. Yeah, right. and got interviewed and all that. But because of our ears, I couldn't do it out about it. It's a 10 yeah, year old. Yeah, you've got to be 10 and over. I'm used to go to court them days. And, yeah. But I got a, that was uh, like the so, first proper time. Right. So what was the next? What, what, how did you escalate? We're going to go through the years, yeah. you know what I mean? But, did you go out drinking around? Did you drink it out? Well, once I, I got kicked out of that school, when I went, went into the senior school, the next school up, I'm right. um, obviously 11 year old. And then from the age of 11, we're just drinking, started getting into the dope, you know, right. smoking dope. Yeah. Um, back then it was. I slid back. That was, that was so a right attack. So, the attack. I attack. Packy Black, as he's going to call it. So, yeah, having buckets and lungs and all that. Yeah, yeah. Back when, uh, and how old are you then? Now, about 12, 11 years old, 11, 12, and then just progress from there. And was the kids the same age, or were they a bit older? A lot of them were a lot older because yeah. I was used to knock about with the older kids. Yeah. Yeah. And they say, go and do this, don't oh, go and do that, and you'll do it. I bet you can't put that window thrown in. They have to be doing all sorts of stuff because you're in the gang. You think, if I do this, uh, Tommy's going to love me and Johnny's going to love me, <laughs> but they do it, don't they? just use you, really. I remember on the break time in school when I was 11, 12 year old. And the, the older lads, 15, 16, couldn't roll a spliff, so I'm, I'm 11 year old rolling the spliff for everyone. <laughs> and everyone getting stoned in school now. Did your mum and dad sush it out being on the drinking on the, on the drugs? They didn't really. No. Uh, probably looking back, like they must have known, you know what I mean? Coming yeah. in red eyed and all that, but yeah. Uh, yeah. But I like a progress from there, and then it just carried on drinking every weekend, but then it started happening. It was every night, drinking right. every night after school. Right. And then, for the age of 15, experiment with other drugs and taking ease and yeah try bits of fucking whiz on films yeah. and all yeah did that were you still all right then when you were taking that were you still oh do you have any paranoia ever coming over your okay so because when you're first oh, on it it's not so bad as it but when oh, you get wasn't more, too bad. when you start taking them more and more oh, i can't give you psychosis i had it on the crack i was taking yeah. it and going was that? And you'll be there looking through windows and everything oh, there's right. no one there so i'll cook your head because you think you think so because obviously it's a mind altering drugs, so elders have told you where your mind rests, isn't it? And it starts draining all the good endorphins and stuff no, like that, and you don't eat and you don't sleep properly, and you think I've had horrible thoughts, no, don't you? In your head, so well, I think it's when you get a bit older because it wasn't until from the age of 11 up until I was 20 till I got sent to jail, yeah, just on the drugs and the drinks, like from, just recreationally on a weekend, ease and stuff like that. When was the first prison sentence you got then? It was when I was 20 year old when I got locked up. Mm. Yeah, but I turned 21 in prison, casting young offenders. Yeah. Went there and yeah, that was my first time in, 20 year old. Was there more violence in the, the, the offending jail for the, the younger lads than there was in the prison? Uh, there was not as yeah. not as serious, yeah. but there was more fighting because it was happening every day, every day there'd be yeah. fights. Yeah. With the mean young full of testosterone. Oh, I'll fight you, I'm not scared. And they know for a fact that this fight's not going to last two minutes. The yeah. screws are going to come in and break it up. It's going down there. Hey, Emma, this picture's gone a bit dark. <laughs> right. 
But I yeah, uh, yeah, go on, I don't know what's happened there. Open so, the, uh, it's gone off. It's gone off. Yeah. There's no pick, no back. The back thing's not in the plug. What? It's not plugged in, I don't think. It is plugged in. It's gone off. What's going on? Yeah, it's still on. Oh, no, it's just gone off there. The back, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll tell you guys about that. We've we probably uh, lost there. Uh, I thought the Martians must have been. <laughs> yeah, so what, where we at? Um, you, but are you in Cossington? Yeah, um, yeah Cossington. Obviously, when you get in there. Yeah. When you're first time in that as well, everyone's trying to wear you up, see what you're about now, right, so yeah. you've got to fucking step up. Were you a big lad this time? Well, I was, I was six foot four, and I was 15, 15 and a half stone when I went in. So that's a big lad in there, yeah. yeah um, and were you being big? It sounds crazy, but they want to pick on the biggest one because they think, if I have a fight with him, I'll look good. And people just sit with me, they think, oh, I thought Brian Cup. No, you didn't. In fact, you got annihilated. <laughs> they, they say I had a fight with Brian Cup, but you, know, you got annihilated. And I imagine the same with you, mate. So, oh, I would have to It works both ways. Sometimes you get it because people didn't want to mess with you because you're big, but then sometimes you see these fucking idiots that are wanting to go. Yeah. But it happened there. Uh, I'd only been in a fucking couple of weeks, where not even that, a few years. Yeah. Last time. Yeah. Some little fucking idiot trying to fuck on. It's so always the ones who can't fight. Oh, trying yeah. to fight a little big man syndrome, I call it. I'll fight you. <laughs> Never had a fight in my life, and they're full of drugs. And, and yeah, so. But then when I turn around, put it on him, says, Oh, you fucking idiot, getting the shows. I'm yeah. fucking not you, but he just didn't want to do it then. Yeah, yeah. So when, what happened then? You, you, you got, you'd probably gone from there to the big deal. I went from there yeah. in the Durham. Yeah. What are you, uh, what year was this then, uh, Ricky? This was 2006. 2006, yeah. Yeah, um, I went from there down into Durham. I'd been in Casson about two months from fucking. Yeah. When I went down to Durham Court, the one I sent us back to Casson. What were you in for, for, for this, when you were in for the first time? The first time, with, this was the only time I, when I first came in. Yes. I was on bail for a section 18. Right. Being at a house party, being having a session and all that. And fucking one of the lads in the house had a bit of an altercation with them. Yeah, and as I was leaving the house, he was like, You know, but a fucking arsehole, you really. Yeah, so I've just turned around, fucking bang, and just knocked him out. Yeah, and then I fucking bet he's or something. Oh, uh, but I've just dived yes. on top of him with a fucking bottle and just smashed him up to pieces with right, a bottle. Right. Was that with being on drugs as well, maybe? Or you on I drugs, just drink and being on the sniff and being on yeah, the yeah. drink and just yeah. they probably wouldn't have done it if you weren't on the right. sniff and drink it since you like all your mind. Just just paranoid, it? Yeah, 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 you do. It's something that you do. Like now, you wouldn't do that right now. Right. You think, oh, that's not worth it. You walk away. But when you're on the drugs and you drink, the paranoia is that bad. You, you, you think, and then you think, and, uh, yeah, and I've got to have respect here. And oh, you, right. when you're young, you have all that rubbish in your head, don't you? Oh, you right. disrespect me in front of people, <laughs> and then you have to go to town on him. Oh, you're not going to disrespect him no more. But then, what happened to what oh, happened to your jail sentence? How did you how did you go to court and get the, Wait, the jail sentence? For that one, there I wasn't hard to myself in. Yeah, because right. obviously, fucking from being a young kid, fucking about was wanted. To the years, songs, mate, yeah. I was wanted to go to jail, you know. Is that because your dad had been in jail? My dad had been in prison for fucking spent 14 years and before I was born and I was used to listen to the stories about... So it's the it, same thing again, you're a product of uh, your own environment, <clears throat> isn't your dad? Oh, I'd like to be in there, I'd copy off him and my dad, so yeah. He's always telling that. us the stories about when he was fucking fighting with screws and he used to have the yeah. old metal trays and smashing screws up and everything. Yeah. I was thinking it was clever and I'm thinking, fucking hell, you know what I mean? Right. Thinking it was all... Big and clever. But what was it like when you went in the big jail? <coughs> Were you a bit scared going in the big jail? Were you a bit anticipating it was going to be weird? No, I was like, like, I was um, in that mindset. I wasn't fucking off. Awesome. I wanted, yeah, to, I wanted yeah. to go and taste it. You know, I was like, right. and I was ready for it. Like somebody trained to be a teacher or somebody oh, trained to be a, a, a lawyer or something. So you trained to be, I'm going to prison. Trained yeah. to be a prisoner. Yeah, <laughs> trained to be a prisoner. And you got that. You thought it was great. I did, I. Yeah. But uh, yeah. What, I, what I got sent for, because two weeks before I was due to get sentenced for that offence. Yeah. Yeah, I had another altercation with some other lad, and he fucking rang up thinking he's a fucking... Well, he battered my sister a couple of weeks previously. Right. Yeah, um, and then he'd rang up this dear, fucking mouthing on down the phone, and I just said, you know how you're fucking talking to me, daft cunt? Yeah. And he was still yeah. giving us a bit of chip, so I just fucking hung up. Phoned me mate, yeah, and we flew up his house, put the fucking balaclavas on, ran him with my shed, he's booted his door clean off, and just fucking started chopping him up. Right. And what then, was the extent of the injuries then? Nearly chopped his arm off, his arm was hanging off, fucking, yeah. and just had about 10 fucking wounds off of the machete, or just chopping them. And with it being above the waist, it's classed as attempted murder or something? Well, that's what they were, yeah, they were yeah. trying to do, was with attempted murder, but yeah. uh, 
obviously that was a black god drug was sexually 18. 18 which is a man you can get you can get life for that oh, can't yeah. you it's just the people don't realize section 18 is one punch breaking through his jaw that's a section 18 wounded with intent when they said i used to punch people i said well you intended to break that oh, jaw yeah. and i used to get nicked anyone else just get done for assault but it was oh, section 18 wounded with intent so then it's a massive charge they oh. kept can, can catch you on it so when you went to court what was what was this you know, barrister and that said to you the barrister was actually saying was that because there was no evidence, and I had a, I had a balaclava on at the time, there was no forensic evidence, and the only thing was my voice. Right. And it was like, I went in the house saying, where is he? Yeah. And that was what the convicted us. Convicted, yeah. So I went into court thinking that off, oh, I've got to win the case. Mm. Got found guilty five minutes later. Got sentenced to fucking IPP, 99 years. 99 the, years, but... What was it like then? You must have been absolutely unbelievable. Just fucking feel it collapsing. I've turned round, looked at my family in the public gallery, and I just fucking I tried to speak, and I just couldn't. No, no words could come yeah, out, so I just went like that, waved, shock, yeah. and just put my head down. Well, often I was like, "Fucking hell!" And how how long? I know it must have been a long time because I only got three, about three years to drive to the fence, and I thought I was badly put on though. No, so yeah. it took me so six months for get my head round, even three years. So. How long did it take you to get your head around that night and never? Again, I fucking, because I was in that mindset and I was still like, young, I just fucking... It was good because you didn't give a fuck. Yeah. I just saw it. <laughs> it was a very good thing. 300 years. <laughs> 600 years. Obviously, I didn't want that long a jail. I just wanted to <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. It's about seeing, be careful what you wish for. Fucking hell. Yeah. So what happened? Did you do any education in there? Did you start buckling down? Or, or were you getting into fights and things like that? I was still in there. When I was in Durham, got into a few bits of more scraps in there, but mainly, yeah, the fucking, see, they had the nonces mixed in in Durham. Yeah, the a, a wing. Well, uh, uh, on, oh, uh, was it a wing, I think they're on. They had them all, just the, all over the jail. Oh, did they? Oh, when right. I was in, I got put on 43s. I caused the riot in 1991. Um, they all sat down in the yard, so all the, all the lads and they all went on there. There used to be a gym on the yard years ago, right, right. and they went on the gym roof and they smashed the gym up, and they all got two years. It was called Mutiny, the charge right. they got done for. They all sat in the yard, 176 lads sat in the yard, because I got put right. on the block. And Douglas Heard, the Home Secretary, come in a helicopter, and anywhere it was in, it's all the papers and everything. But yeah, in them days, you went in, you had to piss in a bucket, right. and you had to do number twos and the bus came by where else to hold it in and you'd be sat like this on the toilet and people be walking by and throw them up all right grab the ballast out and have a number two on the toilet be, all right big father because the doors only be halfway there so you'd be all right more than bride about 100 business walking by all right big fella you're all right what are you doing what do you think i'm fucking doing <laughs> it was terrible you know i felt embarrassed but uh, yeah you have to slot you obviously the, the disease oh, and everything yeah. on the wing but it, it was terrible in them days in the 80s you couldn't even lay on your bed. Oh, yeah. If you lay on your bed, you used to get nicked. It was terrible. Okay. They were all old ex armies. Um, these armies, oh, <laughs> all ex armies, oh, bastards. They were walking with them uh, oh, up nail boats, you know, with the studs in. <laughs> and you, you, know, you could, couldn't go to sleep. You'd hit bang and deliberately do the doors, fall them on. And you go past that, you know, you, I'm one of the people, at least noise wakes me up. So it used to annoy me. So getting back to you. So what was it like then? Uh, when I used, getting back to that, when I yeah. used to find out who the nonces were on the wing, because it oh, always right. used to come out in the yeah. paper. Fucking near the yeah. even was it even the Chronicle? Yeah. Used yeah. to get that and I just used to fucking terrorise the nonsense fucking so yeah. the only bits of scraps yeah. I was getting them was doing fucking yeah. nonsense and yeah. So it was what what the screws did do is it just turn a blind eye oh, I just say I never I'd never seen that. Yeah. But yeah, I'd been there. Wait, did you you must have got these solace through the gym, did you? Did you get the I gym? did, I yeah. right. one of my pals who I've known since I was a kid, he was another one that I used to look up to who had been to prison that before. Yeah. He seen the way I was going down and that and they uh, before I went and got hard on myself in, got logged up, he said there's a bit of advice. He says, every opportunity you get, get to the fucking gym. Yeah, yeah. So uh, well, I took that advice and it was the fucking best thing I've ever done, to be honest, going did, to that gym. Did you do any courses in there to, to, for the gym? Or did you do any? I did a British Amateur Weightlifting Association. Oh, yeah, I've done that on yeah. the bowler course. Sorry. Yeah, the bowler, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. About six weeks course, <laughs> in it. You have to name every bowler oh. and every. It's not as easy as you <laughs> no, think, is it? Not. And then I got 99 or 100 for my uh, first date. Oh, yeah. Only got one wrong. Um, one, 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 one question wrong, but uh, you have to get 60% to, to about the first day as well. But while I'm in the event as well, do it. And you get people's, ah, oh, wasting time. You're not wasting time because you're educating yourself, yeah. aren't you? And it helps you. And when I went to the other jail, I was the only one with the first day, then with the bowler leaders and, yeah. and the NVQ uh, to train people. So I got a job at the gym outside. So when I was in Leeds, where it was called Wakefield, 
open jail these letters go out and go to, I used to have to oh, you had to get the EBS checked and all that stuff and they checked all that and everything was perfect. I used to go to the I used to go to the train and the lads used to give us money in there to go for some way and we used to get down there. Oh, I've just got my computers doing it again. So yeah, um yeah, so what was it like for you, Brian? What was the hardest thing for you? Did, did you have any kids? I didn't have any kids at the time, no. no. For no. My, um, did you miss your, your family, obviously? No, I just missed my family, but um, I, after I'd been at Durham for another couple of months, I got transferred over to uh, Franklin, maximum security yeah, prison. Yeah, Was that a lot harder? Was it was it? actually the best jail of all well, of them. Because the lads were all... I, all, I, all, all, they all, they all, all even though they're all in for fucking mad things, hit many yeah. fucking gangsters, people yeah. from all over the world. They just want to do the jail door and get on oh, with right. it. And, all right, mate, and everyone... Could, like you you get on because you yeah. get on with each other because you're all in for the same type of thing, right. aren't you? So it's like what you would call like proper people, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, fucking yeah. people watching it or people that haven't been a jail or they'll be thinking proper people, what do you mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Proper, like proper, when you're in that what, environment. Well, what we used to have in them days, Ricky, was it was them and us. So the schools oh, would be on one side and the schools would be other. And now it's there's no such thing as that now. It's no. all like spice, I mean, they're on all sorts oh, of shit. I on. went back in 2009, I went back. And I found the lad from um, Billingham, and I went in. It was like it was like being in a hotel. You have a telly, and no <laughs> control. I was getting milk every day. I was getting shirts on the on the, on the thing. Um, clothes. It was just like it was like being in hotels, pool table, table tennis, uh, football. It was just it wasn't. It was, it was like most of them love it in there because oh, a lot, especially the lads from from other countries when they come in, they get nicked, you know, for being immigration. They love being there because they get oh, three yeah. meals. Never a good it's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Never had so good. So, so what was it like in? Uh, did you meet any big names in there? Oh, there was loads up in there. Uh, Franklin, fucking people from all over the country. There was a couple of cards from down there, uh, Middlesbrough. We were fucking did not Davy Fields. He was up there. I know Davy very well. Actually, he was actually out with me uh, the night after he shot the lad oh, right. from what we called Blue Bellington. Where no uh, some kids he got for the shock or something. Did he? he shot a lad. He shot oh. a bloke. He shot a bloke in the street. But he was looking for two other lads from uh, Middlesbrough. But they got protection. They got put in the Dragon Horror Hotel. So. He was with us near, near Christmas, it was. Um, I've seen him a couple of months ago. He's a Christian now. Aye. He's got his legs. He's doing all right. Yeah, he's ripped to the bone. And he's looking really good. And he's got away from all that nonsense now, same as you. Well, I've seen Dave. He actually nearly got fucking killed in front of him. Yeah. Like, it was fucking nasty. What happened? A couple of lads there jumped him. He got rugby tackled, slammed upside down, slamming him on his head. Yeah. And he was fucking out. I didn't actually see it. I was wrong yeah, the other side. Right. Yeah. And a couple of the lads went and jumped in and they were stamping all over his head. They nearly killed him, to be honest. Like, yeah. fucking, uh, it was up raw on the wing after that, like. Yeah. Uh, they, used like the metal, they used to have the metal trays, the chains, and onto the plastic no, ones, though, so. But up in Franklin, like, yeah. fucking, it didn't go off that often, but when it did, it was, like, fucking proper. Senior, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The fucking, the second day I was there, I seen this terrorist, uh, it was called Barth, there at Barth, he was doing a 40-year life sentence. Right. He was ahead of Al-Qaeda in the UK. Right. So okay. was he based at? I think he was down the country somewhere. Right, so right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, some lad come in the kitchen, pick the pan of hot oil up because you can cook your own food up there. Yeah, I've been in the kitchen. One of my pals was cooking as a steak, and yeah, there's a pan of hot oil just bubbling away. And some lad just come in, just picked it up, just poured it over the top of his head. Right, and I seen all his skin and his hair just peeling off the back. Yeah, I was like, fuck you know, yeah. out the kitchen all because he used to <laughs> when I was in a few times, people got sugar and water done. They don't no, up water, they put the sugar in because the sugar then melts and sticks to your face. So it peels like napalm. You used to yeah. with petrol years ago that it would be in that. They drop it with the uh, sugar in it, so it would stick to them. Yeah. So it's a nasty, nasty thing, isn't it? Well, you could uh, you could actually buy the oil on the canteen. Right. But after that, they stopped selling it. But the lads right. down the kitchen, mainly the fucking the kids up on the yeah. drugs. Yeah. People used to pay them to smuggle fucking bags of oil. Right. Give them a line of subby to bring yeah. <laughs> bring a fucking bag of oil back. But that, when yeah. I was in Havrick, it was like billets, you know, army billets, like, like the RAF oh, right. billets, and there'd be eight of you in. And maybe sixteen in the billets, or be eight on one side. Either like the <clears throat> doors would be open, but the main big doors at each end would be locked. And it was great in there. We, we used to put the eggs in the kettle. We'd have we'd have um, running up and down the passages, we'd piss up. So we'd have <laughs> everyone helped each other, and it was great. Oh, you know, but some jails you just get them when they're they're like they were sort of in there. It was a bad jail fabric because it was only a cat based jail, but. In the middle of nowhere, right up the Cumbria, the seagulls oh, were like that. Huge. <laughs> I thought if I could get six of them on a bit of rope, I could fly home, you know, the huge <laughs> that celebrate. And um I remember being in there and it was only one from the North East. Oh, I know anyway. So I put I went on the bag like I did with McIntyre. So I went on the bag and they went, oh, I couldn't handle it. He said, if you get you take your head off and 
obviously they used to call me Big Ben in there. Remember all oh, the biz? Oh, really? Big ben. <laughs> and on a Tuesday, nobody had have no folk. Nobody had have. They used to get paid on a Tuesday. So I'd buy me stuff at the counter. Easter used to go for the lad from there, Mark and Bay. And he used to go and get me food for us and bring it back. And we used to, on a Friday, Saturday, nobody had no money. So we'd give like a Mars bar for two back. We'd have them all. It was like no grout, your porridge. You remember him? It was like you and there. And we used to have doing that. But it was, you have to, you, what it is with jail, you've just got to go on with it. If you've oh, committed the crime, you've got to do the time. You can't say, oh, them screws are horrible or this and that. No, they never put you in there. They're just doing the job, aren't they? They're not being horrible. They're just doing the job. And uh, without you committing the crime, you wouldn't be in there. Oh. So what was it like for your? Your family, what well, they must be more affected than you, obviously, because you're in there every day talking, messing about, running about, doing jobs and stuff. Obviously, they sat at home on their own. I guess, see, I think the ones that were affected most was like my ma, yeah, my brother and sister, the ones that I was close with. Yeah. Well, my dad was actually in Franklin because he ended up he got a life sentence when I was 18 year old, right, for murder, and that was what actually sent me fucking worse and sent me down the wrong path, you know. Yeah. I was already gone heading that way anyway, but yeah. when my dad got life off, it just fucked me head up and made me worse, you know. Were you ever in the same jail as him I was in Franklin on the same wing with him. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. My father thinks so. Fucking mad. So have you got any kids now? I've got four kids now, I. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, off, off my life sentence, I've done five years. Right. I went from Franklin. I've done a, a drug and alcohol course in there. Yeah, because you've got what they do with them, just to stop you, sorry to stop you. Uh, I remember being in with a couple of lads who got IPP and they were raging. I said, what's the matter? He said, I'd rather have 20 years, I'd rather have 15 years. So why? Because they could keep me in forever. So they got me. What they do is they put you in jails if you kick off, where you have to, you have to do courses. This is for people, you, you wouldn't tell yeah. them this. You have to do a course done in certain jails, yeah. so many courses. So they'll send you to a jail where that course isn't done. Yeah. Am I right? Oh, that's right, I. Yeah. But the IPPs, I'll just talk about that for the yeah. people. That's obviously yeah, yeah. a lot of people are yeah. not understand yeah. but yeah. They brought them out in 2006 or 2005. I got mine in 2006 and they brought them out for fucking for nonsense. Right. Because obviously they That was the main thing they brought them out for. They yeah. brought them out yeah. for them because they're fucking... The psychologist told us in front of them, she says, when they were interviewing nonsense for fucking courses and that, they were blaming me saying they were going to get back out and do it again. Right. So when they were doing a fixed sentence, they had to let them out. So yeah. they brought this IPP out so if they're fucking, uh, if they're, they're, they'll not let them out if they're not changed. So what they'd be doing so is... So then, what they're actually yeah. done, they ended up dishing them out to fucking violent offenders as well. Because <clears throat> they, right. them, they kept them sentences for the most serious and violent offenders. Yeah. And fucking ended up giving them more to the likes of me than what they did for the fucking nonsense. Yeah, because the nonsense, <clears throat> once it's in them, they can't stop. Oh, it's like, 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 like a robot and this one's a sea kid or something oh, like that. Right. I remember one that long ago, but the one who killed... Jamie Bulge in them. No, they were up here in Ingleby Bank. They were actually oh. living up here. One of them lived up here and uh, he was in a house around here and the old, the old, the old people got him out. He was up here and he was found again with more pornography shit on his computer oh. and got jailed again. It's like they just can't stop. It's when they do it. In America, what they do with them, they castrate them. If you want to get out, you get 20 years jail or you get castrated. Well, I think it's a good thing. So it's well, going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck all this. Like taking chances. Yeah, so but them IPPs are the fucking they brought them out and they just the system couldn't cope with it, it just blocked the system up. They were only meant to give a thousand out, they ended up giving seven thousand out. So what does that mean? They blocked the system because there was that many people in jail. The there was that many people in jail and everybody's gotta do courses to get rehabilitated yeah. and change themselves. But yeah. the IPP lads when lasses as well. You've got to do these courses or you won't get out of prison because yeah. they're saying that you're not fucking changed unless you're doing yeah. the courses. Yeah. So there's that many people blocked uh, waiting to do these courses. Yeah. It just fucking it fucked the system up. And like, yeah, there's know, lads yeah. in there now, 16 years later, and they're still sitting there. Yeah, I remember a lad said, me, I've been waiting 15 years for the course to keep sending me different jails where, because I've kicked off and fought and I've been caught with drugs, they keep sending you another jail. I said, well, why don't you do that jail? He said, because all the jails oh. go and give the courses. There's only certain jails that do the courses. So they send you to a jail thinking, right, what are we clever with us? They'll just box you off to another jail so you could be in that jail 10 years. Then they say, right, you've moved. Then they send you another jail. You could be in that jail 10 years. And there's no course in that one. So no. they can just keep you in forever, like you said. And that's what it is a good thing for the nonsense. For them, are Yeah, it is a good thing. Spoken. That's why the prisons have had to build more prisons, isn't it? Because no. it's, that, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous how many people are in jail, isn't it? It's ridiculous. But in 2012, these IPPs were deemed unlawful, so they fucking got abolished. They no right. longer hand them out. Right. But yet, all of us that were serving them 
instead of bringing us up and resentencing us, the fucking weight kept on them. Yeah. So how can they say that this fucking sentence is unlawful, but yet still keep all of us on it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, there's lads in there. I met a lad who was back in this time, Indian lad from fucking down Bradford, lovely lad, singer. Yeah, he, uh, he'd been in 15 years, I think, now. But it come up, he got a six-year tariff. He'd done seven years before he went up for his parole here and never been in any bother. And they said, oh, fuck, and they knocked him back because he hadn't done the course. So they sent him yeah. to another prison, got to the other prison. And they said, oh, you're not suitable for this course. You need to do another course at another prison. Yeah, so... So uh, he comes up for his parole eight years later, gets knocked back again. But his head's off fucking far up his arse. He says, I either fucking kill myself or turn to drugs. So he turned to the drugs, comes up for his next year and don't let him up because he's on drugs. Right. End of the year later, 10 years, he's fucking, it's fucking crazy. Really, he should have only done six years. Right. He's in there a year later and because he's in there and his head's gone because he's got no parole, no parole, no chance of getting out. Fuck it, I'll either kill myself or go on drugs. So you can tell yeah. people to take drugs and they died doing that. And then obviously, Coming up for parole, they're saying you're on drugs, so you can't get out. And I'm thinking, the poor fucker, how's he? How can you win? You know what I mean? So, yeah. 15 years later, he's still sitting there. His son was a year old when he went in. His fucking son's 16 now. Yeah, but it's the most stupid thing they've done. When I was in, I said, I was on the committee of the thing. I said, there, do you know when you're given, do you know when you get, you have a, a, a pee test? Heroin's only in your system, I think, there's a 24 hours. Oh, or something something like that. Like that, right. So, it's in 24 hours. So, people will take it on a, say, Saturday night, <laughs> knowing there's no piss test on a Sunday because of the church, right? Oh, yeah. So they take a little bit of heroin instead of taking the cannabis. Look, people take cannabis. It's 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 not good to take, but not not no, as bad as heroin because you're on that. You're on it. You're on it. So that if you take the cannabis, it's in your system for months. It's, it sticks to your liver and your kidneys. So when you smoke that, you can detect it. So what they do is they start having a little bit of heroin and then have another bit, another bit, and then they're hooked on it. So then the user driving people on heroin. She went to me, the, 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 the woman and uh, the, the governor. What do you? And when I told you, you know what? You're right. Oh. I said twenty four hours. So it's just for they're having that. On the Saturday, thinking, well, I'll be all right Sunday, and I'll probably get a Michael Fist this uh, Monday. I'll be okay by Monday. I'll be oh. sister. So then you say, you know, you're right 100%, Corporal. That's unbelievable. That. So, yeah, there's some of the things they do. I think, I think you just don't even think that. Yeah, right. you make it worse. The IPP, like you said, good for nonsense. But what they've done is putting fine criminals in. But the fine criminals aren't like the nonsense, totally right. different makeup compared to fucking nonsense. Well, the majority of, like myself, who fucking done it, I mean, a lot of them were younger, 17 year old, and that who's getting these IPPs, young lads, mm. full of testosterone, full of drink, commit yeah. this offence, yeah. making daft mistakes and fucking hell, suffering for the rest of your life because yeah. of it, you know, just well, fucking. He wasn't sin, cast the first stone. The thing is, when you're young, you do that thing, you get into these gangs, <clears> that's what I'm telling you, and Ricky will tell you this here. Once you get into these gangs, and you start carrying a knife, these another thing. If you carry a knife, right, the chances you're going to get it took off you and stabbed to death. Or you're going to use it in temper, like Ricky did yeah. in, the, in the party, full of drugs, full of drink, full of rage, full of testosterone, a young lad, and you're going to get a massive sentence. Was it worth it, mate? Or, or, no, it wasn't was worth it? it. Like you see, like you didn't realise at the time. You're not when you're that when you're, you're a young lad and you're in that mentality. You're not thinking about what you're going to do, the damage you're going to cause. You're not you're going to do it, but yeah, like you see, all it takes is that one knife. Yeah. Stab someone the wrong way, you fucking. Well, like, I, was dead, in, you know I, I was in jail. I used to do speeches with the kids and talk. Well, young lads and on the, on the wings, and I'd look after them and things like that. And I was in there for three months, and the screws didn't want me to go. He said, "There's not been one fight or anything on this wing since you've been in." Oh, the day I left, two screws got stabbed, and two lads got beat up the showers. <laughs> and I meet, I seen them from the screws from from the Tesco's. He lives up here. He went, but you should have stayed. You should have got ten years. You would stay in the jail. Get <laughs> it right. But then when I was in jail, <laughs> the crime rate that was here was. 12% and I went to jail and went to 77 so that went up oh, so when I got out I went back down so it's mad in it so <laughs> they still need even we are criminals or whatever you used to be they still need us on the streets to do some of the jobs for them you know but I don't um, have any re regrets of being getting caught the police get you jail you just got to do it I mean, you've been oh, caught you've got to with it but I think it's wrong what you, like you say you put these can yeah. you make one mistake and you go to jail and when you go into jail, you get something like a white collar crime. Like I went into driving offences. I mean, I went. I was in six murders out over the year, over the three years, on remand with murderers and that. And then you go in there, normal person. Like, that was obviously it was criminal. Obviously, what I was doing. But you go in there as a normal kid, getting in trouble for something stupid, like pitching a car, and then you oh. pad it up with someone. What are you gonna do when you're bad? What are you do when you're bad? You do this. You go, and then you come out, come out like a professional, like. 
You know, like, I'm a top plumber, I'm a top doctor. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've been to university, I'm just now I can remember that house. I don't know, I get my DNA, I know how to do that, I know I'll bally up and you learn, don't you? And they teach you how to be a career criminal, and that's why they're in now with all the other lives. But the, the local person works in the shop, or somebody works in the dustbin, or somebody works in Tesco's, make more money than somebody's robbing because you always get caught. And you, you get away with it so many years, and you get bang six year up your ass. And all that time you spend in jail, right? How long did you do in jail? I've done five years. Yeah, five years. Altogether, I've done six years. Obviously, I've got recalled. But I've done five years. I've done yeah. four years. I was eligible for parole. So, good yeah. job that came out then. That oh, I, I think you could have been still in, wouldn't you? But I, uh, I was with that, that PP. Act, what's it called? When it got abolished, I, that's you everyone got abolished, still, you could have still been in, couldn't you? Well, everyone still got it. Who's mm. who got the IPPs? Yeah, like I'm still, I'm still on license for the rest of my life. Oh, is it still licensed? Oh, I right. still like in 99 years. So, I've done five years, got out. I was out for nearly 10 years, right? Yeah, um, I got recalled for a car offense because so I was buying and selling cars, and I bought a stolen car. Right. I, ended up, I crashed the car. Right. And I ran off and left it. Right. I thought I'd get in the way. My airbag and everything went off. And six months later, I was in my recovery truck on a pick a car up and I got boxed in by fucking 10 busy cars. Right. I was just seeing one at first went past and then came after us and I was thinking, what's going on here? Yeah, didn't I flash the lights? Next thing I know, there's 10 fucking copper cars behind us, our boxes in. Well, that was because of me past me violent yeah. fucking yeah. yeah. They need to get back up. Yeah, it stays with you, doesn't it? So, you're down on that thing as dangerous <clears> and you have to the same as I am on the one come at ARB and response vehicles. Oh, well, every time you've been done with fire and with that, yeah. it's always on your record, it comes up to the police when they push that button in the police car, yeah. So for someone like that, you would have just get in the bill and then have to go yeah. to court and all that. But with me, because I'm IPP, you know, ten year. Put us in the back of the police car. They wouldn't tell us what it was at first. I got in the back. They said, "Just sit in the back of the police car. We'll tell you." Yeah. I said, "Oh, you wanted for recall to prison?" And how long did you have to do? I would have could have still been in now. That ninety nine years. What that ninety nine year actually means is, if I don't behave myself when I'm in jail, I'll right. never get out. Right. And that's why there's lads are still in there now. Right. So obviously, when I've went back in on a recall, I've just kept my head down. Fucking this what, time. What? What? Just say this. Yeah. Again. Um. You've done the, the jail, you've got out, you're out 10 years. It must have been harder going back in after you used to be out oh, for 10 years. It must have been devastated this time. This has got to be the worst. This yeah. was the worst as I yeah. fucking hit yeah. rock bottom when I went into Durham. Because yeah. fucking, yeah. obviously, this time in them 10 years that I was out, married, like four kids. kids. Yeah. I've got four kids under the age of 10, you know. My yeah. youngest was only two year old. And uh, I never thought I was going back to prison like the first time. I, I knew I was going to jail. I was destined yeah. for it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But this yeah. time I built a life for myself. Yeah. Businessman, married four kids, everything going well. Obviously, I'd done that with the car. But I, I yeah. thought I'd get away with it, you know. But I uh, got recalled and my fucking head was just up my arse. Well, yeah. So I'm back down, in yeah. Durham and people saying like, oh, how long are you in for? I'm like, I might be pay on life. How long's a piece of string? But not long after I'd been in, is when fucking COVID hit, so it was like 23 hour lockdown, so you're bound yeah. up 23 hours a day. Nightmare. Sometimes it went on to like 36 hours because if you had social in the morning one day, yeah, they had to slip it up yeah, the yeah, day, so yeah, yeah. you weren't back out until tomorrow afternoon. Must be a nightmare. It was like 36 hours bang up. But yeah. when I went back in, I'd been back in, I've trained for the full 10 years I was out. Yeah. Yeah, um, and then when I went back in, just bang into the gym again, doing the heavyweights, went yeah. back with the 19 stone, but I just felt unfit. Mm. Was fucking, so I started doing circuits on the yard. Totally Got insane. myself fucking extremely fit, but I was getting all the lads out with us. Yeah. Being a bit of a personal trainer for them all. That's where it started. I see now. So uh, lockdown happened, and all of my mates were just fucking deteriorating, just went right downhill. What, the ones in jail? Yeah. The ones in jail, yeah. like, because I was, yeah, some of the lads I knew of previous sentences and some of them I knew from back so you mean like home. hammering the drugs and oh, no, yeah yeah but they were just fucking if they missed their social in the morning because they'd been up all night or couldn't sleep through mental sleep. health problems or whatever yeah, like they weren't getting another association for fucking so they're, they're not coming out of the pod for like fucking two and three days at a time just like so you know association what that means it means when you're in jail You'll get like an hour on the yard mm. sometimes, like for, to walk around, or you'll get association for two hours on the night. Usually, yeah. yes. And I, I used to be on with that thing on that um, thingy brain, 
Rain in Britain, I think it was called. A quiz used to come on and do an app come up. I'll be out in half an hour. I think oh. you're an hour and a half or something like that. And you got in the wing, you could use the phone, talk to your family, talk to your other inmates. Yeah. But when you're in bang up, bang up means you're in a, 